Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation now is on a, a story of uh, about 29 generals in the Nigerian army who have been asked to go on a one-month leave. Uh, there have been speculations with regards what this means and if this is normal military procedure. Um, of course, uh, after the uh, placement of uh, Farouk Yahya as the new chief of army staff. What happens to military officers who were senior to him in the army and of course uh, were on courses 35 and 36 and, and the likes. Um, this morning we're going to be speaking with uh, retired Brigadier General Anthony Upo. Good morning, thanks for joining us sir. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning to you, thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm going to you know, start by asking if this is a regular military procedure, if there is an appointment of a, military, of a you know, general or an army officer um, into a position, is it normal procedure that every officer above him uh, has to be retired? Okay, you're yeah, not very clear, but uh, if I understand what you're saying, you're trying to find out about the appointment of... Uh, Chief of Army Staff. Yes, Correct. and, and if, if it is regular army procedure that every officer um, uh, every officer with a higher rank than he um, has to be retired? No, 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 no. Not, 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 not necessarily. Um, the terms and conditions of service provide that only one person can be made Chief of Army Staff at any one time. And the appointment of the chief of army staff is the prerogative of the commander in chief. So he can pick for many cause as long as the person has reached a particular rank, a general rank. Now, once appointed, all those who are senior to him have the option of retiring voluntarily if they so desire. Because the minimum length of service for a regular combatant officer is 15 years. So most of the officers who get to general rank would have put in their 15 years service already. After that, they are free to voluntarily retire without any penalties and they will get their full pension. So it is left to the senior officers who are senior to the officer who has been appointed chief of army staff. If they do not wish to serve under him, they can then submit their voluntary retirement. So it is not uh, mandatory that they will be retired. Okay. There are, there are other, other jobs that they can do within the military. Um, in, the, in the joint service, the agents joint service headquarters. There is um, Ministry of Defence. There are um, military attaché uh, appointments. So there are very many jobs that they can be deployed to. So really speaking, it's not compulsory. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Upo, we, we know that in 2014, when um, Good Luck Jonathan, you know, got new service chiefs, um, about 50 uh, generals uh, reportedly retired. And then one year later, in 2015, when uh, President Mohamed Buhari uh, appointed new service chiefs, about 25, you know, other generals retired. And now 29 uh, to go on leave. And then a one year course, uh, because someone lower than their rank have been, you know, appointed as chief of army staff. So do you think this practice should continue or should it should it be a law for the president to appoint the most senior um, officer or general um, it really depends on the president commander-in-chief the president in his capacity as president can deploy officers as he wishes in his capacity as chief uh, commander-in-chief he, he can do the same thing again. So it is not the norm. What I hear, if it is true, is not the norm. During military governments, the practices were different because um, of the issue of um, perceived loyalty. Hmm. So if the commander-in-chief thinks that um, the people that have been bypassed will not be loyal, then he gives them the option of retiring or be retired. But in a, in, a, in a democratic government, 
is, um, is, is different. So what I hear is happening now about go on leave, then go on training and so on, is, um, is unusual. I don't think it should be institutionalized. It should not. So what, sh what should it be? What, what do you think standard practice should be going forward? Maybe looking uh, for the, the, the next president of the country. How should be or how should the procedure be for the appointment of chief of staff and other um, um, levels like this? The, the, the practice, the well-tested practice that has always been there should be, should be maintained. Do not forget that uh, the military has terms and conditions of service. People tend to forget that uh, the, the, the military, just like the civil service, has terms and conditions of service and it should be adhered to. Now, as you go higher in rank, the possibilities of, of appointment into certain positions reduce. So, if you are a general and uh, they need to appoint a chief of army staff, there can only be one army, there can only be one chief of army staff among so many generals. So, the practice has always been that before you get to the rank of general, you would have even reached the rank where you can voluntarily retire. So, um, it, it would be, I, for example, I voluntarily retired. I was given the option of voluntary retirement or compulsory retirement. It okay. was given a military government, and um, I chose to go voluntarily. I had opted to resign much earlier anyway. So, okay. I chose to retire voluntarily. So, so and, what, what do you... Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, to react to people who say, you know, when you appoint someone who's on a, you know, on a lower level and the others have to go and leave, you're basically losing about, you know, one, two generations of people who, you know, have lots of experience on, on the field. How do you react to that? No, sorry, I, I didn't get you very clearly. Can you say it again, again slowly? Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm saying, how do you react to people who say, you know, this practice of the president appointing anyone he so chooses, you know, basically just makes people or other generals who have more experience, just makes that go to waste? Uh, like I said, the prerogative of appointment is that of the chief of the commander in chief. Um, he has his own uh, way uh, of, uh, he has his own guideline. Every commander in chief has his own guideline for selection. So it is not for us to decide uh, the, the guideline that uh, the commander in chief used. Okay. Um, so I, I think we should just, um, uh, you know, go along with it. Does this in any way affect the uh, loyalties to service, um, knowing that you know there's a possibility that you might get to the peak of your career and then be, you know, asked to resign because you know you you didn't you know hit the uh, a chief of Army staff position. Um, does this in any way also affect the emotional attachments to the Nigerian Army to other military officers still, you know, finding their way to the top of their careers? Everybody wishes to be chief of Army staff, but everybody cannot be chief of Army staff. I think that is the long and short of it. Um, so if you have been if you have been bypassed the chief, commander in chief has his reasons and so you should uh, accept it with uh, with grace and retire it does not mean that it is the best uh, tactically or strategically that is that is selected once you get to the rank of colonel appointments become literally what we say political so but is it, not, isn't uh, that dangerous it always be that you are the one who who can plan battles the best or who can fight the best that will be the, at the top. There are other considerations, political considerations, economic considerations, strategic, so many considerations are put in before um, a chief of army staff is appointed. So um, I don't know what the considerations were for picking of the present chief of army staff. So I cannot uh, be specific to that point. Yeah, but what I'm asking is the considerations you've mentioned, political and economic and, and, and the likes, um, aren't they dangerous uh, with regards to the strength of you know, our army and our, the ability of the Nigerian army to deliver? Um, should, do, would you, you know, advise that we have a specific format with which any person attains the, the post of a chief of army staff? instead of, you know, based on the considerations of whoever is commander-in-chief? 
Well, you know, in the de in the in the developing environment, even in the non-developing environment, in America, for example, um, a number of people have been made uh, chiefs of army staff and so on, who were far far junior to their to their colleagues. Like I said, it depends on the perception of the president, commander in chief. Yeah. The issue of loyalty is always number one. The issue of performance comes second. Because if you have an officer who is very efficient, tactically competent, strategically sound, but not loyal to the system. Yeah, but but how do you judge the military? He cannot command the army and yeah. be loyal to orders that are given to him by the president. Yeah, but how do you the judge? Is very key. Yeah, sorry, uh, General. How do you judge? You know the level of loyalty to you know amongst officers who have given fifteen, twenty, you know, or more years um, of service to the Nigerian military. How do you then say, well, all twenty of you are not loyal enough? Uh, to me as a president, and so I'm going to drop all of you, even if you've given all your life and service to the military. How do you judge that loyalty? Well, look, um, it is th th there are various ways that the commander in chief gets his information. He has his intelligence services that that feed him with information. If you, as a commander in chief, you 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 know that an officer, a senior officer, has been consistently critical of your performance as as a, as, as a president. You will be very stupid to go and appoint such a person as, as your chief of army staff or uh, chief of defense staff. Because you, you then know that uh, the man might overthrow you. So, so there are ways of judging loyalty. It is not a test. It's not an examination. You know, loyalty is something that's a perceptive uh, quality. Oh, well. Um, Anthony Upo, thank you very much. I think we can uh, wrap up here. Um, Thanks for speaking with us this morning, and um, we wish you a very interesting day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It would always be a little confusing for me uh, when we, um, you know, I mean, I mean, mostly about the, the loyalty thing, you know, and being able to pick and choose who you feel is most loyal to you. If, you know, if, if everyone has, has um, given all their lives in, in service, and loyalty to who exactly? Should it be loyalty to the person or loyalty to the country? Um, I believe that, you know, the training and the service, you know, in, in the military, I've never, you know, been there, but I believe that it should be loyalty to the country, mm. not loyalty to a person. Yeah, but and apparently so you can't, it's a, it's a, it's a long-standing military tradition here, so what can we say? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make it entirely right, you know, because I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I think it's also one of the, you know, the challenges that we're currently dealing with in, in, in Nigeria today, where we see government agencies you know op openly say oh, we are loyal to the president it should be loyal to the country but, and but to the loyalty constitution. aside I, I think the focus should be on who you think can get the job better if the president felt that you know right now with the demise of the former chief of army staff that the new one you know is more competent has more ideas then i think that should actually come more than who's who's elder and who's who's older and who's younger absolutely so, competence yeah. should should always you know be key a key factor in, in these things but you know when they say loyalty it just doesn't you know it robs me of in, in the wrong way Lo Lo loyalty is loyalty is a very vital concept in the military anyway so anyway that's yeah. where we'll wrap it up for this conversation with the um, 29 generals who are going on leave we'll follow up on that as more information unfolds we're going to break here and return to talk about the price of bread <laughs>